These financial habits are keeping you poor as a business owner. Follow my video and let's explain more. If you haven't yet, click the bell and subscribe to be notified every time we produce our best pieces of content. Are you sitting there as a business owner thinking, damn, I wish I was earning more money. The profits are not in line with how much effort that I'm putting in. Well, you may be making some bad habits, but I'm not gonna assume, but let's explore the bad financial habits that are reducing the amount of money that you're earning and making you poor. Bad habit number one, spending more than you earn. Ugh. Now, there was a video that I did a while back called Director's Loan Account. This account records exactly how much is coming in and how much is going out to you. Now, as business owners, I come across this a lot. The business owner is spending more than they're earning. So they can get to the year end, get there and go, oh God, I've got all this tax to pay, but their director's loan account is overdrawn. So are you sitting there in the trap of where you are spending more money than you're earning, which is crippling your business and leaving it in debt? Paying yourself last. Now I spoke about on the previous one, taking more money out than the business is earning. But on the flip side, are you leaving too much money in the business? Now it's a great philosophy to have lots of runway in your business and cash is king. It pays for things, it keeps stuff alive, it's wonderful. But are you leaving too much cash in your business, leaving yourself poor? What do you do? Have you got a bad credit score within your business? Now in one of my previous videos, credit scores, I spoke about the benefits and negatives of having a poor credit score and the impact that it can have on your business with suppliers and potentially borrowing for finance. Now, what is the credit score within your business? Have you got loads of bad habits? where well, you're paying creditors late, you're paying tax late, you're overspending, and it's all a bit of a mess. You may not be doing all of these, but are you doing certain sections of these? And if you improved your day-to-day -day habits, and monthly cycles and yearly cycles within your business, how much could that improve your credit, credit score? Which honestly, the credit score means what people are saying about you behind your back as a business. What's yours? Are you overusing the wrong credit card? Now we all like to go out and have fun and spend, but are you living within a range? Or are you propping up a lifestyle using a credit card? Now, some credit cards can be 20, 30, 40% in interest. That is colossal. And if I was investing in something else and I could guarantee a 30, 40% return, I would be investing lots of my money in it. So why are you funding your lifestyle that you can't afford in a credit card that's ridiculously expensive? If you have fallen into this trap, stop. Look at cutting those credit cards up Stop overspending on them and get your business and your personal life financed at a cheaper and more effective rate. So have you looked at both your business and your personal life to see what finance you've got? And not all finance is bad. And are you paying the least amount of interest on this as possible? Or are you closing your eyes and recklessly spending on stuff that's ridiculously expensive, which is costing you money? Are you regularly in your overdraft? So within your business, loads of businesses have an overdraft. They're a really good thing. You dip into them when you need it, but they're not for using all the time really. So if you are finding yourself right at your overdraft limit, month in and month out, you are not using this properly. But what I can say with 100% certainty is your bank is looking at your overdraft usage and if you're constantly at the limit, they know that you are reckless with money. So you are not directly telling your bank this, but you are showing them that you are not great with money. And if you want further capital in the future, they may not lend it to you. And an overdraft uh, can be pulled at any time. So if they feel like you're reckless or they've got a chance when they're not gonna be paid back their money, they can cancel that overdraft limit. So if you've got 10, 20, 30, 50 grand in an overdraft and that call pulled instantly, where would you find that money to prop up your business again? Because it could be a big hole uh, that could explode later on, the dine, later on down the line for you, both your business and personally. You're not investing. Oh yeah, I don't have to invest, Michael. I'm talking investing in lots of different ways. Are you investing in your business? 
So are you investing in assets? Are you investing in technology? Are you investing in team that will allow you to make your business better and earn more significant results? What are you investing each year within your business? And secondly, one of the things that we like to do as running a business is retire. And that could be at any age. And that means to do what you want, when you want, without any fear of money. So are you investing your assets into other assets that can be income generating? These can be ISAs, pensions, property, bonds. There are lots of different ways. So are you investing both personally and within your business that you are maximizing returns on the wealth you are creating? What have you done with yours? Not reviewing your numbers regularly. These can be your accounts, this can be your internal information, and this can be your production, which is, could be both selling things as well as a service. Are you reviewing your numbers on a regular basis? Do you have a handle of exactly what's going on? Are you highlighting problems quick enough? And do you have a handle on cash flow? Or are you just winging it with your eyes closed in the dark? What are you doing within your business to make sure that your numbers are the most optimal they can be and cash flow is absolutely nailed? Not preparing for your tax bill. As in the first point, I've come across lots of business owners and I guarantee that I will in the future that spend more money than they earn. And they get to the year and they go, oh, I've got a tax bill of X. And they go, oh, I can't pay it because they've spent it. Their director's loan account is overdrawn and what they owe the tax man, they need to repay back to the company. This is a bad habit. But if you are reviewing your numbers on a regular basis, even if it's just as a guide, you should be taking 19, some people cautiously take 25% of their guesstimated profit and put that in a separate account. I think this is sound advice because then that way you're putting your tax away for the future because it's not your money. So if, you're not, if it's not your money, don't spend it and put it aside for when you are due to pay it. You haven't got that ache of when you go, oh my God, where am I gonna find that tax bill from? It's there, it's done, bang, move on. You can concentrate on building your business better, investing in the future, increasing your profits, getting your business to a better level. Please prepare for your tax as and when it comes up. You haven't got an emergency saving. Now I refer to this as runway. Runway to me is if you took all of the overheads through your business and you divided it by the amount of cash, how many months have you got available in runway to support your business for a downturn, an unexpected event, for just problems? What's your runway within your business? I think it's key to have a big chunk of cash in there that you could then have as a safety net. So what is your runway within your business and how are you preparing so it's safe? paying services you're not using anymore. How often do you run through your profit and loss account or your direct debit schedules to have a look at what expenses you were paying for that you're not currently using now? Now, personally, the classic for this is a gym membership, yeah? We signed up on the 1st of January, we're going to the gym, we're getting slim. 1st of February, it's a distant memory because we're really busy. Now, if you went through your business and this happens a lot, how many bits of computer software have you signed up for? Advertising monthly memberships that you're just not losing. And if you went through on a systematic basis, even if it was say like every quarter, and you went through and say, right, am I still using this? Am I getting value? Yes, we keep it. If not, check, bang we cut it. I've lost count of the amount of business owners that I've sat through and done this exercise with, and we've saved them thousands. Now, that, it may feel like, oh, that's a bit stupid while they're spending on this, but how easy is it when we're getting busy with our business to then look back and say, oh, that was really good back then, but now we're not really using that, it's rubbish, or we've evolved and we've actually got two bits on there, and you're looking at what you're spending is delivering the right amount of value for you. So are you sitting down with your numbers to look through what expenses are you paying for that you may not be using now or they're just rubbish? If you cut them, that would increase your profit. I hope you found this video really helpful. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to click my Calendly link below. We can jump on a telephone call or a Zoom call and I'll answer any questions that you may have. I promise there will be no pushy sales pitch.